Hello, welcome to the Friday, September 28th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Las Vegas, Nevada. If you're looking for something to play with this week and Renato gave you a nice little toy here and that's Python code that helps you to enrich the output of Red Air 2 and X64 debug with decoded strings. So the problem he had was he had a pretty massive piece of malware that he wanted to reverse engineer. Now this piece of malware had a lot of encoded strings, simplex or algorithm, but essentially what he wanted to do is decode the strings and then insert them back into the disassembly output. So this way he had the strings where they were originally located in the binary and then of course by decoding them he immediately was able to recognize where which string was being used. Pretty neat trick and a neat little piece of Python code that Renato is sharing here with our readers. And Duo Security took a closer look at Apple's Device Enrollment Program, or DEP. This is essentially what Apple uses for all of its different operating systems, whether that's tvOS, iOS, or macOS, in order to allow companies to more or less automatically add devices to their mobile device management platform. The neat thing kind of about uh, this particular protocol is that the user doesn't really have to do anything if the user receives a device whose serial number is registered for a particular company, the device will automatically enroll itself in the mobile device management program using DEP. And that's sort of where the first problem lies in order to check if a device needs to connect to a particular mobile device management system. All you need is the device's serial number. What you get back is the device's activation record. Now, you may argue there isn't really that much in this record, essentially the URL where to enroll and a little bit of information about the company. So for example, company name, address, phone numbers, and some email addresses. However, uh, this information could still be sensitive if it refers to, for example, to a particular system administrator. So some of this information could be used for social engineering. Now, to move beyond this point, Apple does offer basic authentication, so a username and a password would be required. However, even that is optional, so an attacker could register their device with the company's mobile device management platform. What this means is that, for example, an attacker may receive certificates that this company trusts and also access to some software. Essentially, this device could then be considered as a trusted device within that organization. For the most part, what this comes down to is information leakage. How severe this is really depends on what else is going on in this organization, how these devices are exactly treated. So by itself, this doesn't really look all that terribly severe, but it could certainly be used as a stepping stone for a larger compromise. And ESET Security found an interesting UEFI rootkit in the wild. They say, and I believe they're probably true, that this is the first sighting of such a rootkit in the wild. ESET is associating this rootkit with the Setnet group, as ESET calls it. It's also known as Fancy Bear and often associated with Russia. Now, ESET found this rootkit on systems in the Balkans as well as in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, only a small number of affected systems are known. And ESET called this particular sample Low Jacks, a little bit based on Low Jack, which is legitimate software that was, however, in part used in some prior attacks by this particular threat actor. 
So Lojack is legitimate anti-theft software and it goes through extreme lengths in order to gain persistence on the system to make it difficult for someone who, for example, steals a laptop to remove it. And it appears that Lojack's, this latest rootkit, did adapt some of the methods being used by Lojack. Of course, uh, this particular threat group has used uh, trojanized versions of Lojack in the past in order to snare victims. Given that these are highly targeted attacks at this point, you probably don't have to worry about it too much, but one simple fix in order to prevent being affected by this attack is to enable Secure Boot. Secure Boot will verify BIOS or UFI signatures, and this particular binary is not validly signed. Well, and this is it for today, so thanks for listening, and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.